Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Emily Thornbury, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, is one of the stars of Jeremy Corbyn's front bench. And we're going to be talking about Brexit, of course, and President Trump, of course. But let's start by talking about the Conservatives' extra spending on health. Emily Thornbury, you must be delighted. £20 billion more money for the NHS. Yeah, I mean, I'd certainly welcome it if we could believe it. Let's see if we... Let's oh, you see, don't believe let's, it? Well, let's see what they deliver. They... How are they going to pay for it? So they've, they say that uh, they're going to increase taxes, but we've yet to hear who's going to get their, their taxes increased and how. Um, they say they're going to increase borrowing, but they haven't told us by how much, and they haven't told us what the effect will be. They've told us that they're going to pay for it from a Brexit dividend. We don't really know what that means because we don't know what the deal is going to be and what the overall effect on the economy is going to be and actually whether Brexit is going to end up costing us a great deal of money or whether we can strike the sort of deal that would actually do us some good. So lots of pertinent, so lots of lots of pertinent questions. And we've got another 15 <laughs> on top. That we've as we sit overnight. here, in mid-June 2018, which party is promising more for the NHS, the Tories or Labour? I think that people are not fooled. I think that they saw in the Tory manifesto last year a whole load of promises, but none of them were costed. Well, and that's what brings me back to costings. But which because one, our, Tory because, or well, Labour? Well, because our, our manifesto actually had these things costed. So we said that we would spend an extra £7 billion and we would do that by stopping mm. the cuts to corporation tax. So we meant it. And well, when, you, when you can say how you're going to pay for it, you mean it. I'm going to come on to that in a second. But just on the, on the raw figures... Um, the, the NHS has asked for 4%, some people say 5%. Um, the Conservatives are offering 3.4%. Is that enough money in your view? I think that it is not certainly... I mean, one of the problems is, is that we have no idea how much they're going to spend on social care. Sure. And social care... But just on the NHS, No, 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 no you, but you can't talk about just the NHS. You're trying to you're, avoid every I'm not, answer. I'm not. I'm telling you that you can't have the NHS without social care. Anyone who has an elderly relative knows that or is elderly themselves. And if you're not looked after in your home or you don't have somewhere you can go to when you leave hospital, it continues to bleed money and resources out of the NHS mm. and leaves people abandoned in okay. hospital beds. Emily Thornbury, the reason that you don't want to get into percentages, can I suggest, is that if you look at the percentages, they've been asking for 4 to 5%. The Conservatives are offering 3.4%. Labour is offering 2%. Labour is offering costed percentages. And we're, what we're talking about is... So for the first is... time in, in, in modern political history, the Conservatives are offering more for the NHS than the Labour Party. Well, as I say, it goes hand in hand with social care. We have not heard anything about social mm. care. For example, we were talking about spending an extra £2 billion a year on social care. So if you add that on, actually, you may find that these raw figures don't quite, don't, don't quite paint the picture that you're saying. On top of that, as I said at the outset, let's see what they actually deliver. Because as those Tories who went in to see Theresa May in her office behind the Speaker's chair last week heard, she may promise one thing. The question is, what is it that she's going to deliver? Come the next election, will the Labour Party be offering more than £20 billion for the NHS? When's the next election going to be? 2022, to be, I think. Uh, or it might be this autumn, or it might be next year. We have such a fragile so, government. Who knows when the next general election so you, is going to be? You, you don't know what you're going to be offering for the NHS. You don't know what the percentage is going to be, and you don't know whether you're going to be offering more money than you are at the moment. But if you're not offering more money than you are at the moment, the Conservatives are at least promising a great deal more than Labour Party are. In the end, you know, people know that they can trust the Labour Party with the National Health Service. We created it, we have always spent more on it, we have always looked after it. We have saved the NHS in previous times when the Tories have not been spending enough money on it. This time, we've had eight years of underfunding on the NHS and it is at a state of collapse. People know that the Labour Party will spend what is necessary in order to ensure that our NHS delivers properly to those that need it. And I ask you again, when you look at the numbers, do no, but you you're think... You're asking me about numbers from a year ago where I can tell you that we have our numbers that are costed. You throw in front of me some things which the Tories have come up with, which we've yet to which, see the well, details of and okay. yet to make any sense and without any numbers on, on social care. And then you say... You know, they can say something terribly so you, so, vague, so you, you're, but your you're, you're costed numbers... OK, um, you know, I mean, you're, you're on 2%, they're on 3.4%. Now, Gordon Brown, former Labour Prime Minister, was very, very clear about this, and he had all the numbers mm. at his fingertips, and he said you have to pay more for the NHS, Labour has to do more, and you can do it by raising national insurance again by 1%, and people will accept that. So there was an honest proposed tax rise to pay the money the NHS needs. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and obviously that was a very popular tax, and Gordon was quite right to introduce it at that time, and it was something that the NHS needed. But would you like I'm to not do going it again? To be, I'm not going to be developing Labour Party, Labour Party health mm. policy on your programme, mm -hmm. not least because it isn't my brief. But, uh, but, I mean, as part of the leadership team, I can tell you that our figures make sense. Mm. We've yet to hear the Tories' figures. Obviously, our policy continues okay. to be developed, and, and we are prioritising social care as much as the health service because we know that social care and health go hand in hand. Because, I mean, it was described as a gamble on the front page of the Mail on Sunday today, partly because alongside the Brexit dividend, which we can talk about, they are promising higher taxes to pay for the NHS. Would Labour ask people to pay more taxes to pay for the NHS? Well, yes. I mean, that was what was in our manifesto. So in our manifesto, we, would say, we said that we were, not going to, we were not going to agree to the Tories' cuts in corporation tax. We were going to put the... the, the and that was what was going to give yeah. us a large amount of the money. And we weren't going to agree to the cuts to, to taxes for the very richest. And we said that as well. I mean, you know, if you look at our manifesto, we, we're being very boring, but we do cost what it is that we promise. And the Tories may come up on a, on a wet Sunday, afternoon, Sunday morning and come out with this, but we want to see where the money is, where it's coming from, it and what does it mean? It's extraordinary. Here you are being very, very soberly, fiscally responsible. You're supposed to be this radical Sorry, Labour no, no, Party, you. and you've been overtaken. And not only that, you've been overtaken on the left by Theresa May. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't think so, because I think right. that, as I say, they're in government, they have to deliver on this, and we need to see how it adds up. And we have a history at the moment, particularly over the last few weeks and months, where they will make all kinds of wild promises and then they don't deliver on it. Do you think they could honestly promise this money to the NHS and Simon Stevens and then simply not pay it over? Well, they promised in the past, for example, that they would give them a large mm. amount of money mm. if, the, if the NHS went through so-called efficiency savings. And they kept holding back the money and they kept holding back the money and the NHS said, if you give us the money, that will help us with our efficiency. And they never got the money. And so, you know, you get okay, these so kind of Okay, so in short, promises. you don't believe them really on this? In short, well, let's wait and see. And if, they, okay. and if they deliver on it, then fantastic, because quite frankly, you and I know that the NHS is on its knees and has been for a long time, and for the last eight years, it has been bled of funding. And if the Tories have had a, a road to Damascus conversion, good. What is a blah, blah Brexit? OK, so the, so the rule is never make a joke when you're in politics. You must never make a joke when you're, never be sarcastic or anything else. My concern is, is that we need to make sure that the, the exit deal that we have makes some sense and is able to look after our economy. There are some major decisions that need to be made, and yeah. yet they have yet to make them. They have yet to be able to commit themselves to what they're going to do about a soft border. They have yet to, to fully make mm. up the deal in relation to what will happen to EU citizens. You know, we've yet to have that. And uh, who knows where we are with the money? You know, they're saying that they're going mm. to have a dividend, you know, today. Yeah. I mean, in the past, they say that they've committed themselves so to blah, a certain blah, of money. So blah, blah is caused by divisions and confusion, basically. Well, just not meaning what you say and saying what you mean and not, and not having a proper deal that could help us to, to, to move to the next stage of Brexit. Isn't the Labour Party more divided even than the Conservatives? You've lost six front bench colleagues this week alone. Ninety of your colleagues voted against the whip on one of the crucial votes. That's about a third of the parliamentary Labour Party defying the leadership. The party is split from top to bottom on this. If you ask the Labour Party, if you ask you know, anyone who's a member of Parliament in the Labour Party, I've yet to find someone who disagrees with these basic principles, which is we have to leave the European Union. We have to remain as close as possible for the sake of our economy and for jobs. Well, in the first, and, I can think of a few in the first and we need to be And we need to be in the, a customs union and we need to have some changes to immigration. Now, that is a hell of a lot more than you'll ever get from... You will not be able to get the, the Cabinet together to be able to come up with four basic points that they agree on. We agree on where it is that we want to go. The difference is in the Labour Party is, is that we've had some arguments about what the right mechanism is for being able to deliver that. So some people believe that being in the European economic area is the way to deliver that. There are others of us, which includes me, who believe that the EEA doesn't really fit the British model, so we need to have a negotiated settlement. Even those who agree with the EEA model think that it should be negotiated. This is technical, but okay. the broad thrust of it is we're leaving... We support, we, you know, we, uh, we accept that we have okay. to leave, we need to remain close, there need to be changes to immigration. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is... Have you heard of Back Together? No. 
Back Together is the, is the organisation of, of Labour MPs who are so upset about what the, where the leadership is, this wibbly-wobbly uh, message they think they're getting on Brexit, they want to set up a new organisation. I just wonder what your message is for them. So who's in that? I can give you a long list. But oh, there is. There. I mean, because quite often there is, you there hear. Is, no, there is a list. Because quite often me, you let, hear these let things, let and to, then you never know who it let, is. Let that's me turn to something else then. To it. Um, Donald Trump, Trump is coming on a visit to this country next month. Yes. Uh, normally, in those visits, uh, he would meet the opposition team. Have you had your invitations to meet him yet? No. Nothing at all. Do you expect to get them? It's up to them. I mean, the protocol normally is is that a visiting. Um, you know, leader will ask to see the, the opposition if they want to. If we get an invitation to see him, of course we'll go and see him. If you haven't had an invitation, and if it doesn't arrive on your doormat in North London, perhaps it's because you have called him a racist and described him as an indescribably awful, uh, violent blob of horribleness. No, I called him an asteroid of awfulness. An asteroid of awfulness. It's world. not very polite. Yeah. Well, it is, but that's because that's what he is. But isn't, aren't you doing exactly what you have so much fun accusing Boris Johnson of doing? In other words, talking loosely, and in this case, quite uh, endangering this country. One day, you may very well be the foreign secretary of this country. I certainly hope so. At that point, we will probably have left the European Union and we'll be looking around the world for big alliances. And none will matter more to us than the United States. And no one will matter more in that relationship for the time being than Donald Trump. And yet the Labour Party has gone out of its way to offend him. No. Um, I went to the United States a couple of months ago and I made a lot of good friends in the United States with people with whom we share values. And I begin our all relationships on that basis. And I met people in the Senate and in Congress who finished my sentences for me. I mean, there are, you know, we share values with the United States. We do not share values with Donald Trump when he wants to walk away from the Paris climate change, when he wants to tear up the Iran nuclear will you deal. Be protesting and I am against quite him? happy to say that openly, and I will say it to his face. I have no problem with that, and we must be clear about it. And in my view, when you have a bully like that, you stand up to them, and you're clear about what it is that you disagree, and you don't need to be pusillanimous. Okay. What happens to you, you know, look at what's happened to Theresa May. Right, She's been as nice as she possibly can, and he can't even work out how many points out of ten he wants to give her. Emily Thornberry, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. <laughs>